あなたはこのハイラルを再び照らす光今こそ旅立つ時です Hey guys, and welcome to Game Gengo's vocabulary series, where our goal is to collect all of the vocabulary in the JLPT through video games. In this episode, we're going to be covering The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Now, in this episode, we are going to be learning 13 and 5 words, 21 and 4 words, 34 and 3 words, 6 and 2. 29 and 1 and 73 other words、uh, that aren't counted in the JLPT. This is going to put our total words that we've learnt so far to 966, which is actually 8% of the entire JLPT. Already just in episode six. So, this is a really interesting episode where we learn a lot of kind of useful language, but also a lot of the more difficult high level language. So, I think this should probably be a test for almost anyone at any level range.、Uh, there's some interesting language here in The Legend of Zelda. So, without further ado, let's get into it. So, starting things off, we have this voice kind of echoing in the distance、uh, telling us. So, me is your eyes. Samasu is to kind of wake up or to kind of be awakened or even to come to realization of something. So, to open your eyes, to awaken your eyes, to kind of wake up. So, saying, wake up, wake up. It's worth noting that this verb is not the must form, polite form, and this is just the verb samasu or sameru、uh, to wake up. So it's not the must form, it's just the normal dictionary form. So, me o samashite, the te form here asking you to do something. And then we hear this voice say it two more times, followed by Rinku. Now, Rinku is the character that you can see right behind us. That is Link. それはシーカーストーンそれはシーカーストーン。So, それ here is a new word that's just that. Now, you can see the kanji here. It's not usually written in kanji, but this actually is the kanji for それ。So, それ is that, like これ、それ、あれ、that kind of それ。それは as for that, and then we have シーカーストーン。So that's just the seeker stone. So the seeker stone is the thing that you can see behind you,、uh, the kind of Pokedex, <laughs>、uh, the useful item in Zelda Breath of the Wild. So t h e r e s e e k e r stone. Nagaki ne muri kara sameta anata o michibiku de shou. And she continues, and here she says, Nagaki ne muri kara sameta anata o michibiku de shou. So Nagaki, this is the first new word that we have, which is a noun, and this is to be the long time or even a long distance of something. Now we can see it modifying the next word, 
nemuri. Nemuri is kind of slumber or sleep. So, nagaki nemuri is a long slumber. So, being asleep for a very long time. Kara here is from. So, from a long sleep. Sameta, again, we know that's to awaken, to wake up. So, you have awakened from a long slumber. Anata, all of this is just modifying anata, you. So, you who have woken up from a long sleep, oh, so we're doing something to you, michibiku desho. So michibiku here is a word that's to guide someone, to show someone the way. And interestingly enough, if you have a look at the kanji for this michibiku, the top part is actually path, right? So you can kind of think of it as, you know, showing the path, showing the way uh, to doing something. So if we put it all together, I'm sure that it will guide you who has woken up from a long slumber. And then she says, Shika stone o kazasu no desu. So, Shika stone o, so we're doing something to the Shika stone, and this is kazasu no desu. So, kazasu here is another new verb, and we can see here with a quite complicated looking kanji, quite intimidating, this kanji is not very, very common at all. Uh, uh, but this word here, kazasu, here, you can see that it's to hold something over. It could be to hold your hands out, or it could even be to cover something with something. So what she's actually saying is hold out the seeker stone, as in kind of like, you know, put the seeker stone on top of this thing that we can see uh, in front of the door. So the no des here is actually a way of kind of asking someone to do something. It is that you are to do this, right? It's kind of a way of ordering someone to do a certain action. So, sore, that, wa, as for, anata, you, no michi, so your path, o hiraku. Now, hiraku is to kind of open up. So, this is saying that it will open up the path. So, as for that, sore wa, it is a thing that will open up your path. Anata no michi o hiraku mono. And this mono here is talking about the thing. So, she's saying that this seeker stone is something that will open your path for you. And so as the path opens up, just like she said, here we can see she says, Anata wa kono hairaru wo futatabi terasu hikari. So, anata wa, as for you, so we know that she's talking about you, anata wa, as for you, kono hairaru wo. So, hairaru is the land that they're in. Hyrule. Kono Hairaru is like this land Hyrule. So this land Hyrule o. Oh, so we're doing something to the land of Hyrule. Futatabi once again. So we can see here again once more a second time. And this is really commonly used um, in lots of situations, but especially in fantasy games where you know the darkness had once been you know overcome and now again. It's awakened. Again, the darkness returns. This kind of feeling um, of, of, of use. I often see it in the introduction for video games. So here we have futatabi, once again, once more. Now, terasu here is interesting. This is the verb of shining something, right? To kind of shine a light on something, to illuminate something with something. And we can see here the next word, hikari, that's the light. So, the light that 
shines again. Futatabi terasu hikari. So why is she talking about a light that shines again? Well, if we rewind a little bit, we can see anata wa. So as for you, this land Hyrule o futatabi terasu hikari. You are the light which shines again on this land Hyrule. Anata wa kono Hyrule o futatabi terasu hikari. Ima koso tabidatsu toki desu. And we have this interesting bit of language, ima koso. So ima means now, and koso is kind of a way of really adding real emphasis of certainty to something. So it's like this time for sure, right? Now is the time, right? Really adding emphasis that right now is the time. <laughs> ima koso, this is the time. And then we have tabidatsu toki desu. So tabidatsu here is the next verb that is to depart on a trip, to kind of embark on a trip. Tabi is a trip, and then tatsu, or here seen as datsu because it's combined with another word, this is saying to kind of embark on it, right? To, to, to leave on it, to stand up and go on a trip, right? So we have tabi datsu here is to begin a trip. And then we have toki. So this is modifying toki. So it's the time, that's toki, that you are going to embark on a trip and then des it is. So now is the time for sure that you are to embark on a journey. And now after the beautiful introduction of uh, Breath of the Wild and we see the huge, uh, beautiful kind of countryside and everything, um, we see these crazy towers appear from the ground. Um, and I've kind of skipped a little bit here because this is the next voiced dialogue. And so here we're on top of the towers and we hear that voice again. And here we see Omoidashite. So, omoidasu is just the verb to remember something. Now, if you're familiar with this channel, we've seen this word a lot, but omoi is like a memory, and then dasu is to kind of pull out. So, omoidashite is to kind of remember something, pull out a memory, right? So, it's to recall something, to re recollect, to remember. But it's again here in the te form, asking you to do the action. So, omoidashite, remember. As for you, So, hyakunen, this is 100 years. Hyaku is 100, nen is year. Hyakunen no aida. So, aida we've learned already is kind of the interval. So, here the interval of time. So, 
100 years, right? This interval of 100 years has passed. Nemutte ita no desu. So, nemuru here is the next new verb that we have, and this is to sleep. Um, so, in this way, um, it's kind of he's been in this state of slumber for some reason, we don't know why,、um, but this character Link has been asleep for 100 years. So, we see, hyaku nen no aida, nemutte ita no desu. And no desu here is just a way of explaining it is that. So the voice is teaching us that it's been 100 years that I've been asleep for. And then she says, So, kono is this. And then we have this interesting little word here, kaibutsu. So, if you have a look in the distance, you can see these dark red and black things crawling all over the castle. That is the kaibutsu. That is the monster. Now, this is a really common word when you're talking about monster. There are a few other ways of saying monster,、um, but this is quite normal、uh, to say, you know, a monster, kaibutsu. So, this monster that we're referring to in the back. Now, Following this is the ga particle. Now, this is commonly used when a, a subject is going to be doing an action. So, we're probably going to be talking about the actions of this monster. Kono kaibutsu ga. Kono kaibutsu ga. Honto no chikara o tori modoshita toki. And so we have Honto no chikara o tori modoshita toki. So, Honto here is the word to say really, truly. Or, kind of the authentic something. Honto no chikara. Chikara is just the strength. So, the true strength, right? The real strength, the, the kind of authentic strength of something. Honto no chikara o. What are we doing to that strength? Tori modosu. So, tori modosu is to take back. Toru is to take, modosu is to return. So, to take back. And then we follow again with toki. So, this is all modifying. Toki, which is time. So, the time where the monster, remember, Kono Kaibutsu ga, brings back its true power. And then she says, Sekai wa owari o mukaite shimao. So, Sekai here is a new word, and this means the world.、Um, now, Here it's not necessarily talking about Earth, but more just the world, right? The society that we have in this world, right? In kind of that kind of sense. So, Sekai is often used to talk about,、um, you know, the world in a kind of Social sense, right? For example, now when we talk about you know, global politics and stuff, we would use things like Sekai here. So, Sekai wa, as for the world, o w a r i the end, o So, doing something to the end, and then followed by this word, mukaete shimao. So, mukaeru is an interesting、uh, verb because we can see it has a lot of meanings. Look at this one, two, three, four, five. Many, 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 many meanings. So, number one, to go out and meet something. Two, to receive something, right? To kind of receive a guest, to greet a guest. Three, to accept something. Something, right? So, kind of to receive, to accept a family member. So, you can see that it's kind of this welcoming of something, greeting something, accepting something. But we can actually see at the very last definition, number five, that's the real use here in this context to approach a certain time or a certain situation. What are we approaching? Owari, the end. So, the world is kind of approaching the end. And it's in the te shimao form. This is to say that it's doing something regretfully or completely. So here, there is a level of finality to it all that it's going to, you know, completely end. But it could also be a kind of regretful action as well. It's showing that this is an unfavorable situation, that the, the world is approaching its end. Sekai wa owari o mukaete shimao. Sekai wa owari o mukaete shimao.
And then we have a bit of a separated sentence. So first we have dakara. As we already know, that means that's because or that's the reason why. So that's why dakara. Te okure ni natte shimao mae ni. So te okure here is another new word, and this is a noun that means being too late, right? To kind of lose a chance, your final chance of something. So here we have te okure ni naru. When you see ni naru, it means to become a certain way. So what is it becoming? It's becoming too late. So te okure ni natte. Teshimau mae ni. So we already know that teshimau is to say that something's going to completely happen or kind of regretfully happen. So before it completely becomes too late, and that's the mae ni before. So before it becomes too late, te okure ni na teshimau mae ni, and then followed by hayaku, hayaku. So hayaku is just quickly, right? Fast. So she's saying hurry. Hurry, hayaku, hayaku. Dakara, te okure ni natte shimau mai ni. Hayaku, hayaku. Okay, now after another short little time skip, uh, now we've kind of come across this abandoned church, uh, which is kind of a special location in the game, and we see this beautiful statue, and then all of a sudden a voice comes behind us, and we have a look, and here it says, Megami no shukufuko uke, ichidan to tanomoshiku natana. So, Megami here is the noun for a goddess. And as we can see behind us, this kind of statue of a goddess praying, that here is Megami. Megami no shukufuku. This is the blessing of the Megami, the blessing of the goddess behind me. And I actually received that and kind of increased uh, my health pool. <laughs> so the shukufuku here is the blessing, right? Where you saw the lights coming down. That was the shukufuku, the blessing. So, Megami no shukufuku o uke. Ukeru is to receive something. And as I just said, I received the blessing. So that is this ukeru, but it's in this kind of connected form, right? Instead of ukeru, which is kind of almost a finished sentence, it's uke, showing that the sentence isn't yet finished. It's almost like adding a comma to the sentence. So, Megami no shukufuku o uke, ichi dan to tanomoshiku natta na. So, ichi dan to. This is actually a way of saying more and more. So, it's an adverb here, and it's modifying the next word, which is tanomoshi. So, tanomoshi here is an adjective to be reliable, trustworthy, or kind of promising, right? Someone that you can you know, rely on. So, we can see it here that it's tanomoshiku naru or tanomoshiku natta. So here the ku naru is just like we saw previously with the ni naru, but this is for adjectives, like e adjectives. So it's ku naru to say to become tanomoshi. It's becoming reliable more and more, ichi dan to. And then finishing off with a na, which is kind of a masculine ne. So here, this person behind us says, Ah, you've received the blessing of the goddess. You're becoming more and more reliable. Megami no shukufuku o uke, ichi dan to tanomoshiku natta na. Washi wa koko ja, hayo agatte koi. Washi wa koko ja, hayo agatte koi. So, washi, this is a word we've already learned actually in, uh, I believe, the Fire Emblem episode. Washi is a kind of old speech um, to say oneself, generally used by older men. Washi wa, so as for me, koko ja, koko here ja. Hayao, so hayao here is a weird bit of language actually. This is actually a kind of old way of saying hayaku. So in the kind of old rules for conjugation, this is a way that it used to be conjugated. Instead of hayaku, it was actually hayao, 
so kind of an old speech. You can tell this person is very old in their personality and the way they speak. They're using washi, they're using hayao, and then they say agatte koi. Now, agaru here is the new piece of language, and this is to rise, to go up, to kind of ascend something. Well, he's up on the roof, so that's what he's saying. Come up here. Agatte koi. Koi is to come. Agaru is to rise, to go up. So, come on up here. Agatte koi. <laughs> Washi wa koko ja. Hayo agatte koi. <laughs> this kind of old man in a cloak kind of starts with a laugh and he says, ho, ho, ho. So this ho, 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 is just him laughing. It's the sound of him kind of laughing in a like an old wizardry type way. This ho, 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 all right. Uh, that's kind of this old man way of laughing. And then we have very interestingly in kanji, Sasuga. So this is generally written in hiragana, however this is the kanji for sasuga, which means as one would expect, or just like I thought. So it's showing that a person kind of lived up to your expectations, or that they are in a certain quality that you had expected of them, and you're like, ah, sasuga, right, ah, yes. Of course, you're the one to have done a great job. Ah, Sasuga. Now he says it twice as kind of like, oh, as I could expect, as I could expect, right? Oh, yes, of course, of course. You're, you know, I, I thought you were very capable and yes, yes, I'm quite right. I was right in expecting that, right? So Sasuga, Sasuga. And then he says, Dewa. Now, Dewa, um, often used um, by people when they're kind of uh, getting to the point. Right. I used to have a Japanese teacher uh, at university who would always start her sentences with dewa, dewa, dewa. Um, it's just a way of kind of getting to the point, right? So, ho ho ho, <laughs> laughing, 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 sasuga, sasuga, as I expected, as I expected, dewa. Well then, ho 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 ho, sasuga, sasuga, dewa. So this, congratulations guys, is the first sentence for this episode that you should now know all of these words. Let's have a look. Some of this is a bit difficult. It's okay if you've forgotten. So the first one, washi, this is the kanji for washi. Washi no, so something of his. Honto no sugata, so Honto, as we've learned, is kind of the true something. Sugata is one's appearance. So his true appearance, washi no honto no sugata o, so we're doing something to his appearance, miseru to suru ka no. Miseru is to show, to suru is to kind of decide on doing something, and then ka is a question. Then it's finished with this strange bit of language, no. This is again old man speech. You will see this a lot in things like tiger dramas, kind of historical Japanese dramas, as kind of a na replacement, right? Where na is like a ne, no is kind of an older way of, of saying it. So he's like, oh, I guess I should show you my true appearance. Washi no honto no sugato o miseru to suru ka no. Washi no honto no sugato o miseru to suru ka no. So, waga here is again uh, another pronoun, and this is him speaking of himself. However, before where he was saying washi, maybe he was putting himself a little bit, a little bit more humble. It's kind of almost like a, a more of a old way of saying boku. But here he's saying, Waga. 
This is now him showing his true identity. He is someone of higher status. He is someone of more importance. And so he, he says, Waga, referring to himself. Waga na? So this is my name. We often see na here used instead of namae um, as kind of a more poetic way of saying something. Like if you've seen the movie uh, Kimi no Nawa, that is as for your name, right? So the na here is name. So waga na wa, as for my name, and then he says his name, which is very difficult for me to pronounce. We have Rome, so I guess that's Rome. And then we have Bosphorems. So boss frames, boss, <laughs> boss for names, the boss frames. I don't know how to, <laughs> katakana's hard, man. And then we have Hairaru. So that's just Hyrule. Now, clearly he's someone with a very important name that also has a name of Hyrule. The country that we're in is called Hyrule. Waga na wa, Rome boss for names Hairaru. Katsute. Okay, so this is a big one. Uh, we have five pieces of new language here. So, starting off here with Katsute. Now, please don't worry too much about the kanji. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen it used with that kanji. It's not very common. It's usually written in just hiragana. But hey, for all you kanji nerds, there it is. Katsute here means once formerly, previously, in the past. It can also mean not yet or not ever when used with negatives. However, in this situation, it's definitely the first definition because we can see in the sentence there are no negatives. So once in the past, katsute, kono chi. So kono is this, and then what are we talking about? Chi. Chi here we can see can be earth, ground, land, soil, or even just the place that we're in, right? The earth that we're standing on. So this earth, this ground, this place, kono chi ni atta. Now, this is the actual kanji for aru, to exist for kind of non-animate things, where iru is to exist for animate objects like living things, and other is things that aren't living um, by your kind of standard definitions, right? It doesn't have a kind of personality and a life, right? So here, aru to exist, atta means it did exist, and then we have kuni. So kuni is just for a country, or we can even see in archaic speech it's land or earth. So here it is kingdom, so we know that it is a kingdom uh, if you know Legend of Zelda. So that's kind of what he's talking about here, the kingdom, the country, the state of Hairaru. So once this land was the kingdom of Hyrule, katsute kono chi ni atta kuni Hairaru, sono saigo no oda. Sono, that, saigo here is the final, the last, and saigo no, it's the final something, o. O here is his true form. This is king. He is the king of that land. Sono saigo no oda. He is the final king of the land that was once here, the kingdom of Hyrule. かつてこの地にあった国ハイラル。その最後の王だ。この国は100年前大厄災によって滅んだ。と and then we see the flames appear, very cool. Uh, we can see even in kanji again, um, he is the king of Hyrule. And so here then he says, Kono kuni wa hyakunen mae dai yakusai ni yotte horonda to iutana. So kono kuni we know is this country, wa as for this country, hyakunen mae we already know is a hundred years ago. Then he says dai yakusai. So dai means big, right? That's the kanji there, big. So it's a great, it's a big yakusai. What is yakusai? That is a calamity, a disaster, something absolutely 
unthinkably horrible to have happened, right? Often a natural disaster or some sort of godly disaster, right? Of real epic proportions. So we have Dai Yakusai, just the great calamity. Niyotte. Niyoru is like due to something, by something. So by the great calamity, Horonda. Now, Horobu here is to die off, to perish, to be destroyed, to go in ruin. For example, like the Empire of Rome, that has Horonda, that has perished, that has gone into ruins. So saying that by this great calamity, this kingdom was destroyed a hundred years ago, to Iyutana. Now, this here is actually referring to a bit of language that was kind of skipped uh, previously. Um, I kind of skipped some of his just unvoiced dialogue that was a little bit boring, and he just said that the country had destroyed a hundred years ago, and so he's referring to that. To Iyutana. That is what I said, right? <laughs> So, Washiwa, as for me, Sono Toki, that time, ni, so at that time something happened, Inochi, your life or his life, o Ushinai. And again, we can see here, Ushinao is the verb to lose, as in to lose one's life, Inochi o Ushinao, but we can see it's Ushinai. And this is kind of acting again as that kind of comma, showing that the sentence isn't finished and he's continuing on. So I've lost my life at that time, imaya, so now, and interestingly that this is used when you're specifically putting contrast to the past. So not in the past, but now, right, imaya, tamashi here is soul or spirit. So tamashi dake, only a soul no sonzai. Sonzai is the existence of something, right? To exist in a certain way, right? Um, someone's existence would be sonzai. Sonzai to natte shimatta. Now we know here is to have regrettably become an existence of just being a spirit. So he put it all together. Washi wa sono toki ni inochi o ushinai. At that time, I lost my life, and now I have become nothing but a spirit. So, kyoku here is one's memory, right? So, when you, for example, can remember something, when you're actually talking about your ability to remember things, uh, you know, <laughs> your memory of your history, your memory of your life, memory of who you are, that is kyoku. So, kyoku no tashika de nai onushi. So, this is all describing onushi. So, tashika here is to say certain, right? Or kind of firm, solid, certain. Denai is saying it's not. And then onushi is referring to here link. So onushi is a way of saying you. However, it's an older way of referring to you. So kind of like a classical archaic way of saying anata. So here we have to you, onushi ni, you that doesn't have a kind of solid uh, memory. Kyoko no tashika de nai onushi ni. Subete is everything. O, so we're doing something to everything. Katareba konransuru. So kataru here is a very interesting piece of language because you might know this kanji, the first one. This is a really common kanji. In fact, it's even in my channel's name <laughs> uh, for things like language, right? Gengo the go in gengo. So this is actually read as kataru, and this means to tell a story, right? To kind of uh, recite something, to kind of narrate something, right? It's very much talking about 
like when you're reading an audio book, <laughs> right? You're kind of narrating something. You're really putting the emphasis on the telling a story, narrating something. So katareba here is just a way of saying to talk, to talk about something. What are we talking about? Subete. Or, and then we have if I do this. So it's katareba. The ba here is the hypothetical form. So if I were to tell you everything, subete o katareba konnan suru. Now, konnan here is the last new word, and this just means to be in a state of confusion. Konran suru means to do the action of konran, to be confused. So here we can see that he's saying that, look, if I told you everything, you would be confused because you don't have a very clear memory. Kiyoku no tashika denai o nushi ni subete o katareba konran suru. So, so is in that way, right? Like, so, 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 in that way, so, kangae, kangae here is here the noun for thinking or to kind of consider something, or to kind of take something into deliberation, right? So I thought in that way, so kangae, washi wa, as for me, kari no sugata. So kari here is a kind of temporary, right? It's not a permanent, it's almost like a makeshift, it's, it's kind of like maybe you're taking the form of something that's not your permanent form, right? Kari no sugata, that is this kind of, you know, for now provisionary form, o totte ita no da. So toru here is to take. So he taked or he assumed or he took on this temporary uh, kind of appearance, um, thinking like that, right? So here we see that he's talking about the fact that in the beginning of the game, he had his hood, hood on and cloaked up and it wasn't clear that he was the king. He was kind of hiding. He almost looked like a homeless person, right? And so he says that, look, I took into consideration that you might get confused if all of a sudden I told you everything. So, I pretended to be a hobo. <laughs> I put on a kari no sugata. So kangai, washi wa kari no sugata o totte ita no da. Yurusu yo. Yurusu yo. So yurusu here is to forgive. Now, if you've seen my most recent uh, video on Tales of Arise, you know that it doesn't necessarily have to be forgive. Um, it can be just to let someone off, to pardon someone, to tolerate a certain action. So he's saying, look, in this context, it actually could be forgive, right? Because it would kind of make sense for him to say, look, I'm sorry to have deceived you, forgive me. Right? So that actually makes sense in this way. Or it could just be, please permit my action, right? Let me off. Allow me to have done that action. Don't don't have any hard feelings. You know what I mean? That type of thing. So he says, Yuruseyo. Yuruseyo. Ima koso hanaso. Hakunemai. Nani ga atta no ka. And then, congratulations, we have another sentence that you should know all of the language for. So we have. Ima koso. Hopefully, you know what that means. Now, for sure, hanaso. Let's talk. So, now is the time for sure that we can now talk. Now that you have kind of, you know, remembered and I've showed you who I am, now you're ready. Let's talk. Hyakunen mae, 100 years ago, nani ga atta no ka. So, nani, what ga atta, what happened, no ka, is kind of here referring to, you know, what it is that happened. It's adding more emphasis to the nani. Nani ga atta, what happened? Nani ga atta no ka, what it is that happened, right? In a kind of almost explanatory way. So, now's the time for sure. Let's talk about what really happened 100 years ago. Ima koso hanaso, 100 nen mae, nani ga atta no ka? Yakusai Ganon no Shoutai. 
And another sentence that has no new language. So, yakusai gano no shoutai. Do you know what that means? So, yakusai, the word we learnt uh, just a couple of minutes ago, a calamity. Ganon here is the name for the demon that you can see in the background. So the calamity Ganon, right? Yakusai Ganon no Shoutai. Now, hopefully you remember Shoutai. It's a pretty useful word and it means someone's true appearance. So here it's kind of the identity, the true form of the calamity Ganon. Yakusai Ganon no Shoutai. Sore wa taiko no mukashi. この国に生まれた魔王が怨念と化して復活した姿なのだ。それは太鼓の昔。この国に生まれた魔王が怨念と化して復活した姿なのだ。So, as for that, 太鼓の昔。So, 太鼓 here means ancient times. This is a little little bit of a rare word, right? You might say, for example, just mukashi for it to be a long time ago, but taiko no mukashi is just in the absolute ancient of times, in the very beginning, in the time in which we don't even have history recollecting to how far ago that is, right? So taiko no mukashi, in ancient, ancient times, kono kuni, this country, ni, so in this country, Umareta mao. So umareru is to be born. It's the passive form of umu to give birth to to, to, to give birth to someone. But umareru is to be born. Mao. Ma is for magic, and then o is for king. So the demon king. Uh, if you've seen Dragon Ball, you know that this is actually uh, one of the names that Piccolo was originally called. Here, um, it's the demon king, right? Very super, super common word if you like something like Dragon Quest. Every Dragon Quest pretty much has a ma'o, a demon king. So, the demon king that was born in this land long, long ago, Ga, so this demon king is doing a certain action or has done a certain action. And then we have onnen tokashite. So onnen here is a deep-seated grudge. It's kind of this hatred. And you can see the blackness, right? It's kind of representing this hatred and kind of darkness, right? Onnen tokashite. So kasu here is a really, really interesting piece of language because you actually see this with henka the Pokemon word evolution, right? To evolve, dun, 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 right? So this kasuru is just to change into something. What did he change into? What did the demon king change into? The onnen, onnen to kashite. So he transformed into the blackness that you can see, this kind of monster that you can see in the background. He transformed, he changed, he kind of converted himself into this kind of disgusting looking creature. And then we have fukkatsu shita sugata na no da. So fukkatsu suru here is to revive, right? For example, when you revive someone with magic, when you revive someone with the dragon balls, when you revive someone in that way, that is fukkatsu suru. And then we have sugata is the form na no da. This is explaining, it is that. So, nanda, it is that, nanoda is the more polite form. So, if we put it all together, that is the revived form of the demon king that was once born long ago in this land and has changed into this kind of deep seated grudge of hatred and kind of, you know, the blackness. <laughs> この国に生まれた魔王が怨念と化して復活した姿なのだ。ガノンは伝説や研ぎ話に現れるものとして語り継がれてきた。ガノンは伝説や研ぎ話に現れるものとして語り継がれてきた。So, Ganon wa as for Ganon Densetsu, this is kind of the legend, the folk tale, right? Uh, actually, this game is called The Legend of Zelda, and this word, Densetsu, is the legend. So, Densetsu ya, so this is legend and. 
Now, ya is used when you're listing more than one thing that isn't definitive, right? It's this and this, and it could be other things as well. So, densetsu ya, and then we have this really interesting word here, togibanashi. Togibanashi is a fairy tale or a nursery tale. He's saying the fairy tales, togibanashi, and the legends. So as for in legends and tales, and we can see the ni particle is showing in these stories, in these legends. Arawareru mono toshite. So arawareru here is to appear, right? To make an appearance. Um, for example, when a Pokemon suddenly appears, uh, you know, on the screen, that is arawareru, right? This kind of nah, <laughs> nah, <laughs> appearing all of a sudden. So arawareru mono. So the person the one that appears toshite as the one that appears in those legends um, and fairy tales katari tsugarete kita now we know that kataru here is the verb to kind of to recite something to tell something in a kind of almost storytelling way but here it's actually a part of another word this tsugu and this is to kind of do something repetitively right continuously so it we can see if you put the two together to tell the story over and over again if you have a look at the english definition it says to pass down a story from generation to generation to hand something down right so this you know ganon has been you know told as a person or a thing that appears in legend and fairy tales from generation to generation so daga is however aru is like a certain something and then toki we know is time if you put it together it becomes this word or this expression here um at once at a certain time so like once in the past at a certain time aru toki so at one time right aru toki okoku no uranai shi so okoku is a kingdom or is king Koku is a land or a country. So the country of a king, a kingdom, no, so something of the kingdom. And then we have uranai shi. Now, uranao is to kind of do fortune telling. And then here it's uranai shi. So this is a shi, a kind of person who does a certain thing, like a master or some skilled person who does uranai. Right, so here we have a fortune teller or a soothsayer, someone who speaks of prophecy. So the fortune teller of the kingdom, okoku no uranai shi ga. So again, we can see that this fortune teller has done a certain action. Hitotsu no yogen o tsugeta no da. So hitotsu, just one, one yogen. Now I actually kind of spoiled that just before. Uh, in English, yogen here is a prediction, a prophecy. Right, just like a fortune teller would say. So just think Uranaishi, the fortune tellers, they say Yogen, they say prophecies. So here, the Yogen, but one prophecy, Hitotsu no Yogen o Tsugeta no da. Tsugeru here is to say, but we can see that it's a little bit different from just you to say and Kataru to kind of tell a story. Here we can see that it's to tell to inform, to announce, to signal, to mark, right? And this is a little bit more how these kind of, um, you know, fortune tellers say things, right? They announce the prophecy, right? And so you can see here, this is the yogen o tsugeta. Then again, noda is it is that. So if we put it all together, however, there was one time in the past that a fortune teller of the kingdom foretold one prophecy. だがある時、王国の占い師が一つの予言を告げたのだ。第一に厄災ガノン復活の兆しあり、だがガノンに抗する力もまた第一に眠る。
And then here we have the prophecy. Here we can see in the commas, the brackets, we can see what the prophecy is. And surprisingly, only three of these words are new. <laughs> so good job, everyone. So here we have Daichi Ni. Now we've already learned both of these pieces of language. Dai, big, chi, land, put it together, the vast land, Daichi. So the very, very vast land, like you saw in the intro, right? That's Daichi, the huge land. Daichi ni yakusai ganon fukatsu no kizashi ari. So yakusai ganon is the calamity ganon, fukatsu is the revival of, so the revival of the calamity ganon uh, on the vast land no kizashi ari. So kizashi here is a sign or an omen. Again, we're talking about the yogen, the prophecy, and so here we can see that it is, exists, aru, an omen that the revival of the great calamity ganon will happen on these lands. So daichi ni yakusai ganon fukatsu no kizashi ari. Daga. However, ganon ni, so to ganon, kousuru chikara mo mata. So ganon ni doing something to ganon, kousuru is to resist, to defy, to go against. And kousuru chikara is a power that defies. Who does it defy? Ganon ni, the ni particle showing who the, the power, chikara, is defying. So ganon ni kousuru chikara mo, so the power that defies ganon, also, mata. Now, mata here means again. This is a little bit more of a poetic way of speaking, right? So, once again, the power that defies Ganon, Daichi ni nemuru. In the great land, slumbers. Right? So, again, we can see this is a little bit more of a creative way of talking, right? So, Daichi ni nemuru is to sleep in the great land. So, here we are seeing that all of this language is talking about the prophecy that was foretold by the Uranaishi. And here it's saying that there is a omen of the revival of the Calamity Ganon on this great land. However, a power that will defy Ganon also sleeps in the great land. And so then we see Warera wa Yogen ni shitagate hakutsu o okonata. So Warera here is like we saw with like Waga, right? But this is now the plural version. So like Watashi is I, Watashi Tachi is us, Ware and Warera. So here, warera is talking about us. So we, as for us, yogen ni shitagate. So this means to abide by the prophecy, to kind of uh, follow after the prophecy, right? To, to, to kind of follow a certain rule or law or something. Here it's the prophecy of what's going to happen. So we followed the prophecy. Yogen ni shitagate hakutsu o okonata. Now, hakutsu here is, as you can see in the background, they're kind of digging into the mountain. This is an excavation. So they heard that a power was slumbering in the land, and so they decided to dig into it. And we see here the doing part of this sentence, okonao. That's the last part here. Now, you might know this kanji of okonao. It's super common for iku to go. However, actually, if you have a look, might trip you up for a second. You might have thought it said itta, but no, it's actually okonata. <laughs> and this is to kind of perform an action, to conduct an action, right? So here we're seeing that we're conducting this excavation, right? So here is hakutsu o okonata. So we followed the prophecy and we performed excavations. Okay, and now we have probably the most new words in one single sentence here with eight new words. Here we have Sonokekka. 
陶器祖先の手により作られた遺物がいくつも発見された。So, その結果、その that 結果 here is a new word meaning the result. So, the result of that, the result of the 発掘 the result of the excavations. So, as a result of that, その結果、陶器祖先 So, toy is far away. Here, it's being put in the key form to kind of connect to the word that comes afterwards. So, toki sosen, sosen here is one's ancestors. So, you can see that toy here is used not just for spatially far away, but also here kind of in relationships, right? Your distant ancestors. So, here we have toi sosen, or here. Toki sosen. Sosen is the ancestors. And then no te ni yori. So te is just the word for hand. So ni yori, we already know, means by. So by the hands of our distant ancestors. But it doesn't necessarily have to be their actual hands. It could actually be by the work of your ancestors, by the doing of your ancestors, by what the ancestors did, right? So, the, that te ni yori by those efforts, skurareta ibutsu. So, skuru here means to make something. Now, you may already know skuru to make、um, is a very, very common N5 word, but this kanji is a bit different. Why is this kanji different? Well, if you have a look in the English definition here, we can see that it's to make, to produce, to manufacture, to build, or To construct. And that, if you see in the brackets, here we have that kanji tsukuru, usually for large scale building or manufacturing. So, where tsukuru, the one you might be used to, is more for just making small things, this tsukuru is more for making like buildings, right? Big manufacturing type things. So, by the hands of our distant ancestors, tsukurareta ibutsu. Ibutsu is relics or remains. So the remains that were made by our、um, distant、uh, ancestors, ga ikutsumo haken sareta. So ikutsumo is many. This just means a lot of something. So ikutsumo, so many of them were haken sareta. Now, haken is to be discovered, sareta is this passive form. So it was. Discovered. What was discovered? Those remains that were built、uh, by the efforts of our distant ancestors. So, no, Kekka. Toki Sosen no Teni Yori Tsukurareta Ibutsuga Ikutsumo Hakken Sareta. Stoga Yatsuru Kemono Katadotta Yontai no Kyodai Ibutsu Shinju. Stoga Yatsuru. So, hito is person. Ga, they're doing something. Ayatsuru, here is a word to kind of manipulate something, to control something, to operate something. It can often be to control like a puppet or to work behind the scenes, but here it's actually literally more of like to actually drive something, to operate. So, The humans operated, and then we have. So, this bit of language that we can see that's all connected is just modifying Shinju. So, it's kind of describing what Shinju is. So, Kemono is a kind of beast, and then Katadotta is to model on, to represent, to kind of. Take the form of something to symbolize something. What does it symbolize? Kemono, beasts. So, yontai, well, yontai, sorry, not santai, yontai, that's four things. Four kyodai ibutsu, four gigantic relics. So, kyodai is the huge, and then ibutsu is the relic. You might know Kyojin、uh, from Shingeki no Kyojin, that's、uh, the giants.、Um, Kyodai is just enormous. So here we can see the four giant relics that were modeled after beasts Shinju, the divine beasts. 
Shin comes from Kami, the gods, and then Ju here is the same kanji as Kemono for beast. So it's like literally a divine beast, right? A beast from the heavens, right? Something that is out of this world, a beast that is beyond our comprehension, right? A Shinju. <laughs> So, Mizukara is one's self, right? By oneself. Mizukara no Ishi. Ishi is your kind of intention, your will, your volition. De is with. So, with one's own volition, with one's own will. Mizukara no Ishi de Teki to Tatakao. Teki is the enemy. Tatakao is battle. So battle with your enemy. Teki to Tatakao. And then we have this interesting piece of language, Karakuri. Now we can see that it does actually have some kanji up above, although I can't say I've really seen it used like that. It's not a super common word, but this is talking about machinery. Right? It's almost like the Japanese version of the word machine, right? We can see here the machinery or almost the mechanical doll, right? So it's this kind of mechanical soldier, this soldier that we can control, right? Ayatsuru. So, karakuri no heishi. Heishi is a soldier, so it's kind of a, a mechanical puppet soldier, right? Guardian. Guardian are the guardians. You can see them right behind in the back with the kind of spider legs and uh, yes, they're quite a bit of annoying guys. それらは我が国で長きにわたり語られてきた伝説と見事に符合していた。それらは我が国で長きにわたり so, sorera wa. So, sorera are those things. So, as for those things, as for they, as for them, waga kuni. Now, here, this is again, we have waga for me, mine, and kuni for country. So, it's our country, waga kuni de. So, at our country, nagaki ni watari. So, Nagaki here is for a very, very, very long time. And then this Niwatari is actually a piece of grammar, I believe it's N3 grammar, and it means to span over a certain period of time, for example. To span over what feels like almost eternity, right? A really long time. So, Nagaki Niwatari katarare kita. They were told in stories spanning a very, 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 very long time. And as you can see behind, we have these almost hieroglyphic images representing those stories being told for a really long time. Densetsu to, so with uh, the legend, Migotoni, that's kind of splendidly, and then we have Fugo Steita. Now, Fugo here is a bit of a tricky word to kind of understand how it's used. If you look at the definition, it says just agreement coincidence, correspondence, and conformity. None of that really makes any clear sense straight away, except for maybe conformity. So here it's actually saying that the guardians that they were talking about before, Sorera, so those guardians conform to the legends perfectly, Migotoni, that have been told throughout our country for many generations, right? So here we see that you know, they found these guardians that have been spoken of in history's tales and legends. Okay, so again, a pretty big sentence here with six new words. So, Fuin no Chikara. Fuin is to seal away something. 
right? Um, often you would see, for example, um, in Japanese media where you put the seals over a house to seal in an evil spirit, or maybe if you've seen from Naruto, to seal away the kind of cursed mark or something. That here is Fuin. Now, Fuin no Chikara, so the power of the seal, or oh, Motsu, Motsu is to hold or to possess, so something that possesses the power of sealing. And then we have Oke no Hime. So all of this is describing what the Oke no Hime is like, right? So Oke here is the royal family. As we know, O is king, and then this ke here is actually like Ie, family. So the royal family, Oke no Hime. And Hime is an incredibly common word. Uh, Princess Peach, Princess everyone, right? They're all Hime. Um, if you watch any kind of story um, where you have a princess character, it's always Hime. Hime-sama! <laughs> You'll hear that word so much. So here we have the royal family princess who possesses the ability to seal to. So, and Taima no Tsurugi ni. So, Taima here, again, a word that you will not see very often, uh, mostly only used in like, you know, fantasy games and stuff. This is the expulsion of demons. And then we have Tsurugi, which is kind of a more poetic, fancy way of saying Ken, a sword. So the Ken that vanquishes demons, <laughs> right? Taima no Tsurugi ni. So by the sword that vanquishes demons, Erabareshi kishi. So, erabareru is to be elected, to be chosen by the sword. And then the kishi here is the knight. So, this sentence is saying the princess of the royal family who possesses the power to seal and the knight that was chosen by the sword that vanquishes demons. <laughs> Fuin so, Karerawa, as for those guys, as for they, Haruka, this is very, very, very far away, long, long, long ago, right? So, Haruka na Taiko is just an insane amount of, you know, a <laughs> long time in the past. We already know that Taiko is ancient times. Haruka na Taiko is a long, far away ancient times. So, they in ancient times. Ibutsutachi to tomo ni makoto. So Ibutsutachi here is those right, relics. Totomo ni is together with, and then finishing off with makoto. Now, this is a really tough piece of language that uh, you might not even be able to find the, the meaning for very easily, even on the internet. It's not a commonly used piece of language. However, when looking at the Japanese definitions, you can see that it's adding emphasis to a situation that is definitely being the case, right? There's no mistake, right? It has certainly happened. They have completely done something without falter. And what did they completely do? Certainly, Ganon o Fuin Shiteitanoda. They sealed away Ganon. So here it's adding emphasis, maybe perhaps a bit of an old way of adding emphasis to the fact that together with the relics, right, uh, that they sealed away Ganon long, long ago. Next, we have Hyakunen Mae no Okoku niwa Chikara no Keishou Sha de Aru Hime to Sai no Aru Kishi ga Ita. So, Hyakunen Mae 100 years ago, Okoku, the kingdom, niwa, as for in that kingdom, Chikara no Keishou Sha. 
Suchikara is the power, and then Keisho Sha here is the successor of something. So Keisho Sha de Aruhime, the princess who was the successor of that power, to with Saino Aru Kishi. So Saino here is ability, talent, right? Some kind of you know strength doing a certain thing. So Saino Aru Kishi. So some talented knights ga ita. They existed. So 100 years ago in this kingdom, there was a princess who succeeded the power, who was the successor of the power, and there were um, knights with ability. So, so there, there, wareda mo, we also, so sen ni, so to the ancestors, and then we have so sen ni narata. Now, so sen we know are the ancestors. Narao here is an interesting piece of language that says to imitate, to kind of follow after, to emulate, right? So, following after our ancestors, right? Doing the same thing that our ancestors did, emulating them. So narao, narata, we have then jin o haru koto ni shita. So jin o haru is to set up camp. But actually this jin comes from kind of a more military style use. And haru is like to set up a camp. So you're pitching up tents, right? You're kind of setting up base. And then we have koto ni shita. Now, this is a piece of grammar that says to decide on doing something. So they decided, or we decided, on setting up base after, you know, doing the same as our ancestors did. And now another big six a new word sentence here. So we have Hairaru Ju Kara Tokuni Sugureta Saino o Motsu Yonin o Erabidashi Shinju o Ayatsurunin o Tsuke. So Hairaru Ju, this means throughout Hyrule, right? So throughout Hyrule, from throughout Hyrule, Hairaru Ju Kara Tokuni Sugureta Norioko o Motsu Yonin. So tokuni is especially, and then sugureta is like to excel, to be superior at something, to be quite a kind of, you know, very, very good at something. And so we have sugureta norioku, so someone with really superior abilities, someone who is above others in ability, particularly, o motsu yonin. So yonin for people who possess particular strengths that excel above everyone else, o erabi dashi. So erabu we know is to select, dashi as we saw with moidasu, right, to remember, to pick out. Here erabi dashi is to actually select. So they were selected for people who had um, excellent ability above all else from throughout um, Hyrule. Shinju o ayatsuru nin o tsuke. So Shinju is those divine beasts, o ayatsuru is to control, to manipulate, to operate those divine beasts. And then we have nin o tsuke. Nin here is a duty, right? A responsibility to do something. And then tsuke, or here tsuke, is to give someone, to appoint someone, that responsibility, right? So here we can see that those four people who were chosen from throughout the land, who excelled quite a lot, they were selected and they were given the duty to control, to operate the divine beasts. So, 
彼らを英傑と名付けて結束を固めたそして姫をおさとし彼らを英傑と名付けて傑作を固めた。So, そして、is then and, so and then, そして、姫をおさとし。So, this is actually a kind of the cut off version of、um, 姫をおさとして。So, おさ here is a little bit of a rare reading, and this means the head, the chief, the leader. The leader. として、as the leader, 姫を、so we're turning the princess into the leader, saying that the princess is going to be the head of those four people we mentioned earlier. So having the princess as the head, as the leader of those four people, 彼らを、so doing something to them, 英傑と、so 英傑 here is the kind of Great hero. Now we're talking about Kareda, so it's more than one. So it's the great heroes. To Natsukete. Natsukeru is na, name, skeru, attach, to give someone a name, right? So they called them, they proclaimed them the great heroes. Kesoku o Katameta. And Kesoku here is kind of binding together, getting unity and solidarity. And then Katameru is to make it even harder. So they solidified the unity, they solidified their union, right? They became kind of known as, you know, the band of great heroes together with their princess commander. <laughs> 彼らを英傑と名付けて結束を固めた姫と五人の英傑が揃うことで厄災は封印できるはずだった Next we have 姫と五人の英傑が揃うことで厄災は封印できるはずだった So, this is again actually all language that you should know. Now, there's a couple of tricky pieces of language here that we've only learnt、um, this lesson, so it's okay if you can't read this. But let's have a look. Hime, princess, to, with, gonin, five people, no eiketsu, that is the five heroes, ga, so we know that the princess and those five heroes do something. Soro koto de. Soro is actually to come to join together, to kind of group up. And then koto is thing, de is with. So, with the fact, with the thing of them joining together, the five of them and the princess, yakusai wa, as for the great calamity, fuin dekiru hazu datta. Fuin, to seal away, dekiru, to be able to do, hazu. Is expected, data was expected. So, if we put it all together with the princess and the five heroes joining together, the calamity should have been able to be sealed. So, Kokatsu is an interesting, nice little creative piece of language here, and this means sly, crafty, cunning, right? The kind of, <laughs> I think of the kind of,、uh, what is it, the dastardly from the, the cartoon. <laughs> The, I can't remember his name, but the guy with the mustache drives a car. He has a dog. <laughs> oh man, childhood. Anyway,、um, Kokatsu here is crafty, cunning. Kokatsu na ganon, so the crafty ganon wa, as for the crafty ganon. Warera no sozo, so warera is us. Sozo here is to imagine o koeru. Koeru is to go. Even further beyond. <laughs> so, to go even beyond our imagination. Warera no sozo o koeru saku. So, this is all defining what type of saku we're talking about here. And saku here is a plan, a scheme, a plot. So, here it's the plot that exceeded even our own imaginations. O 
Motte, so he possessed a plan that exceeded our imaginations, Fukatsushitanoda, and he revived. So here we have uh, Yatsuwa as for that guy, as for that one, Hairaru Jo. Now, Hairaru we know is Hyrule. Jo here is the kanji for a castle. Now, when it's read by itself, just the noun for a castle, then it's Shiro. That's how you read it. But here we can see it's a suffix, and in this situation, it's read as jaw. So if you've been to a castle that had a name, it would have always been read as something jaw. For example, Osaka jaw, uh, Nijo jaw, right? Osaka castle, um, Nijo castle. Um, the jaw here is used after the name. So Hairaru jaw, the castle of Hyrule, no Chika. Chika is underneath, kind of the basement underground area. So underneath the castle of Hyrule, Fukaku kara. So Fukai is very deep, right? So deep below the castle, right? Hairaru jō no chika fukaku kara arawareta. So again, we see appeared, right? It just appeared from nothing, right? Deep from within uh, the underground basement of Hyrule's castle. Soshite Guardian to Kitanoda. So Soshite and then Guardian, the Guardians to with Yon Shinju. So Yon is for Shinju is those you know, mythical beasts. So the four mythical beasts, Yon Shinju o Notori. So Notoru here, Noru is to ride, Toru is to take, put it together, you have hijack, right? To kind of take over, to seize, um, to kind of commandeer uh, a ship or a plane, to commandeer um, a ship or a plane. So here it's to kind of take over something, to hijack. So we can see that together with the guardians and the um, the four sacred beasts, they overtook them. They took control of them. They seized them. And then, osoi kakate kita. So, osoi kakaru here is to kind of attack on, to swoop down on. Right here we have this kind of oso is to attack. And then kakaru is this feeling of being something right to, to have it done to you so just also is just attack but osoi kakaru is like getting attacked on right you're having all these attacks just you know destroying the lands right to be rushed on to be swooped down on so here we see osoi kakate kitanoda so we were come we came to be attacked by them after they um, you know, hijacked the guardians and the four mythical beasts. So, Shiro here, as I said just before, when it's read by itself as just a noun for castle, here it's read as Shiro. So we know that now. Shiro no Tami, Tami here is for the citizens, the people, the folk, the, the, the people who inhabit the Shiro. So the people of the castle, right? Shiro no Tami ya, so the people of the castle and Shinju no Eiketsu Tachi. So the heroes of uh, the legendary beasts wa, as for those people, Inochi o Otoshi. Inochi is your life, and Otosu is to drop, but in here it actually means to lose one's 
life. Shiro no tami ga shinjuu no eiketsu tachi wa inochi o utoshi. Erabare shi kishi mo kimi o mamoru tami ni kizutsuki taorete shi. Erabare shi kishi mo kimi o mamoru tami ni kizutsuki taorete shi. So, Ebarare Shikishi, the knights who were chosen, Mo also, Hime o Mamoru Tameni. So, Mamoru here is to protect, to guard, right, to defend. So, here, defending the Hime, defending the princess, Tameni, that's for the sake of doing. So, for the sake of defending the princess, Kizutsuki. So kizu is kind of a scratch, a wound, and then ski is kind of to be, you know, covered in. So to get wounded, kizu tsuki, taorete shimata. Taoru is to fall down, to collapse, or be defeated. And then we can see here in the teshimao form to say to be regretfully or completely defeated. So even the chosen knights, in order to protect the princess, were wounded and fell in battle. エラバレシキシモ君を守るためにキルツキ倒れてしまう。こうしてハイラル王国は厄災ガノンに壊滅させられたのだ。こうしてハイラル王国は厄災ガノンに壊滅させられたのだ。そう、こうしてそうこうし
with finishing this off. Right. So here, clearly, she's not able to finish it herself, and she's entrusting Link to do it. Link, ato takushimas. Anata dake ga saigo no kibo. Doka. And so she finishes with anata dake ga saigo no kibo. Doka. So anata, you dake only ga. So you're the one. Is doing or being something, so only you, anata dake ga saigo no kibo. Saigo is the final, and then kibo here is the hope. You are the final hope. Anata dake, only you ga saigo no kibo. Doka. Now, doka is kind of a way of saying somehow or another. Now. She hasn't finished her sentence, but she's clearly saying, "Look, somehow, you know, please deal with this situation, right? Somehow, overcome the challenges that I'm unable to overcome, right? Dorka, please. She's she's calling out to him. Come on, please, right? Do something." Anata dake ga saigo no kibo. And so now we're back from the flashback, and we're back with the king here. And here he says, "Hime no na wa Zelda, washi no musume da." So sorry for the spoilers; you probably already knew. But here we have here confirming what I just said. <laughs> Naughty me. Hime no na wa. Hime is the princess. No na, her name wa as for. So as for the princess's name, Zelda. Her name is Zelda. And then he says, Washi no musume. Washi me musume is daughter. So this is the only new word we have here. Daughter musume. This is a really really common, really super common word.、Um, if you have a daughter, you have a musume. <laughs> very very normal word. Hime no na wa Zelda. So and as well, saigo made saigo is the end. Made is until Zelda is Zelda. O mamote kureta. So someone who protected Zelda kishi. So the knight who protected. Zelda, all the way up to the end. So, so して最後まで Zelda を守ってくれた騎士 And so, the knight who protected Zelda all the way to the end. そして最後まで Zelda を守ってくれた騎士それがお主だ、リンク。それがお主だ、リンク。That is you, Link. それがお主だ。リンクあの日お主の命運は一度尽きたあの日お主の命運は一度尽きた So あの日 that day お主 you お主の your 命運 here is fate or destiny は as for so as for you know on that day as for your fate or destiny 一度 Skita. So ichido here we can see it can be once, on one occasion, or temporarily. And then skido here is to be used up, to be exhausted, to come to an end. So if we put all this together, he's saying that on that day, your fate kind of temporarily ran out, right? On that day, your destiny kind of came to an end. So, kind of almost saying, you know, like you were defeated on that day. However, on this daichi, kono daichi no hokora. Daichi here is the plateau, the tableland. It's kind of the higher up place. Right now, we're kind of cut off from the main area where the castle is, and we're in this kind of 
high up place. That here is the Daichi. So, Kono Daichi no Hokora. Hokora here is the wayward shrine. Now, in Japanese culture, a hokora are those small little shrines you might see around the neighborhoods when you go walking around. Um, they're pretty much in every single neighborhood. Actually, I believe every neighborhood has one to kind of protect the neighborhood. Um, so this here is one of those hokora, and you'll see them all over the place. But here in the game, in this world, we're just talking about a small shrine. It's a little bit different, but to this shrine up here on the plateau kono daichi no hokora ni hakobare and hakobu here is to carry something so to be carried hakobareta but again we have this comma language where he's dropping the last part of the verb hakobare you were carried and daga kono daichi no hokora ni hakobare so, Hyakunen, 100 years, or Kakete, so to kind of pass 100 years over the course of 100 years. Yoyaku here is finally. Um, usually the kanji is not written, however, it is in this case because he's speaking in a little bit more archaic way of talking. So, Yoyaku Sose here is the revival, the revitalization, the regeneration, right? Remember, Link was defeated. He wasn't killed, but he was defeated. Well, I don't think he was killed, but he was defeated. And that's this sose to kind of revitalize him. Almost like if you've seen Dragon Ball where they're in those those capsules and the Saiyans are in the water and they're like, dog, 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 right? And they're re regenerating their, their bodies. That here is sose. And then hatasu is to achieve. So a hundred years had passed and you were finally able to achieve your regeneration. So, onushi you ga, so you're the one who did an action, me samete yori, that means from you awakening, so from the time that you awakened, ikudo ka. Now, ikudo here is kind of uh, many times. So there were many times that mimi ni shita michibiki. So mimi ni suru is to hear something. Mimi is literally your ears and ni ni suru is to kind of to do. It's an expression to say that you catch a sound, you hear something. And if you've noticed, we've been hearing these voices every now and then, right? Zelda's voice and so on. This is what he's referring to. Michibiki no kotoba. Michibiki is, as we know, to guide something. And then kotoba here is the words, the, 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 the remarks that you have heard. Kotoba can also be used just to talk about language, right? In fact, I even thought about calling the vocabulary series kotoba quest, right? Kind of language quest. <laughs> um, but here, it's actually the fourth definition. It's not saying you heard language. It's saying you heard words of kind of you know, guidance, right? So, michibiki no kotoba, that you heard, mimi ni shita, many times, ikudoka, <laughs> since you had awakened, onushi ga me samete yori. Onushi ga me samete yori ikudoka mimi ni shita, michibiki no kotoba. Are wa, ima mo hairaru jou de ganon wo osai tsuzukete iru zelda no koe da. Are wa, ima mo hairaru jou de so, Arewa, referring to the voices, as for that, ima mo, even now, Hairaru jo de at Hyrule Castle, Ganon o, doing something to Ganon, osae tsuzukete iru. So, osaeru, or here just osae, this is to kind of hold down, to press down, to keep control over, to kind of 
hold them at bay. And then tsuzuketeiru means to be continually doing the action that it's connected to. So to be continually repressing, continually holding down, continually deterring ganon. Ganon o osae tsuzuketeiru zelda no koeda. That is Zelda's koe, Zelda's voice. So Zelda's voice is continuously deterring, right? Even now, she is protecting,、um, you know, from Ganon、um, at the castle. So, Daga, however, Zelda no Chikara, the power of Zelda wa jiki ni tsukiru. So, we know tsukiru here is to run out. So, jiki ni means before, long, momentarily, quite soon. So, he's saying that Zelda's power isn't going to last for much longer. Daga, Zelda no Chikara wa jiki ni tsukiru. その時 at that time, so at the time that her power runs out, Yatsu wa, so as for that guy, Kanzen ni fukatsu shi, Kanzen ni here means complete, perfect, just completely doing something, absolutely.、Uh, you might know the Kanzen Master series for grammar. This is the same Kanzen, to do something to completion perfectly. Kanzen ni fukatsu shi, so to completely revive. この国は this country, this land will, 今度こそ this time for sure, 滅んでしまうだろう It will definitely go to ruins, I'm sure. その時、やつは完全に復活し、この国は今度こそ滅んでしまうだろう。リンクよ、国を守れなかったわしに言えたことではないが。リンクよ、So, Rinku Yo. Rinku, his name, Yo is kind of calling out to him. So, Link. Kuni o mamore nakata washi. So, we already know this language, just we're seeing a different kanji say the same thing. This time we have mamoreru. This is the same as to protect that we saw previously with the much simple kanji. This time it's used to guard or defend the country. Kuni. So, Kuni o mamore nakata washi. I, who could not have defended、uh, the country, ni ieta koto de wa nai ga. So, ieru means to be able to say, but we can see that it also could be archaic as just saying said. So, ieru here is to be able to say, and then we have koto, the thing. So, ieta koto, a thing that I was able to say, dewa nai. It is not ga, however. So, link. This is not something that I, who wasn't even able to protect the land, can say, however. Even so, I want to request. Tanomu here is to request something. So here, the king is asking me of some favor or request. He is saying, Look, I need something from you. I need you to do something from me. So, sore demo, even so, tanomitai. I want to request you something. Sore demo tanomitai. Ganon wo taoshi, tami wo, so shite musume wo skutte yatte kure. Ganon wo taoshi, tami wo, so shite hime wo skutte yatte kure. So, we know most of this language, just one verb that we're missing. Ganon or Taoshi, defeat Ganon. t 
Kami o do something to the villagers, the inhabitants, the citizens. So as well, Hime o doing something to um, the princess. Skute yatte kure. So sku here is to rescue, to save. Uh, this is a very, very common um, um, verb here when you're looking at this kind of dire situation to save someone from doing something. A uh, very, very dire situation here, uh, like saving someone's life. So save the princess, save the citizens, and we have te yatte kure. So this te yatte kure is could you do it for me? So defeat Ganon and save the citizens and Princess Zelda. ガノンを倒し、民を、そして娘を救ってやってくれ。だが、今なお四神獣はガノンに奪われたまま。だが、今なお四神獣はガノンに奪われたまま。so, daga, however, ima now, so we know that ima is now, now is also more, so even now, right? Uh, yon shinju wa, as for the four sacred beasts, ganon ni, by ganon, ubawareta mama. So, ubao here is the verb to snatch away, to steal. And then mama, when we see the ta mama, a verb, in the tough form, the past form, followed by mama, it means that it was left in that state, right? So for example, if you left the lights on, or if you left the TV on, or if you left the car door open, right? You would have this ta mama, the verb in the past form, followed by mama. So they are still in the state of being stolen by Ganon. Dada. So Hairaru so even in uh, the the castle of Hyrule, Oku no Guardian, so Oku here means many. Oi is many, and here we're connecting with the guardians, so many guardians, oku no guardian. So these many guardians ga ugoki tsukete oru. So ugoku is to move about, to be, you know, in function, to be moving, and then tsuzuku is to continue. So ugoki tsukete oru is exactly the same as ugoki tsukete iru. But it's just a more kind of older way of saying it. Like an old speech, the iru turns into oru. It's a little bit more humble. So, Ima no onushi, so the you of now, ga, sugu ni, straight away, soon, ano shiro e, to that castle, iku no wa, the thing of going, and then we have the one new word, kibishi karo. <laughs> now, don't be too scared by this word. It's just kibishi, the adjective for something to be strict, difficult, hard to do. And then it's followed by a kind of daro or desho, but it's combining with the adjective, turning into kibishi karo, right? Without that last e, just kibishi karo, right? So we can see uh, that the daro and the kibishi, kibishi karo, is combined. So, you right now, the you who is right now, if you were to go to the castle right now, that would be too difficult. So, mazuwa means as for first thing. So, first things first. Koko yori, from here. Higashi here is a new word, and this means the east. Um, so, north, south, east, west, right? Um, higashi no chi, so the eastern lands, ni aru, mura. So, a village, mura, that exists 
in the lands east from here, Higashi no chi ni aru mura o tazuneru no da. Tazuneru here is to visit. And then Noda, as we already know, he's telling him that this is what you need to do. So he's saying that you need to go visit a village that is to the east of here. First thing first. So, Mura no na, the name of the village, and then we have Kakariko. So, the village is called Kakariko, and why do we know that? Because he's followed by Toyu. So, the Toyu is quoting what it's called. So, instead of him saying Mura no na wa Kakariko Toyu, he could say Kakariko Toyu Mura desu, <laughs> right? It's a village that's called Kakariko. そこに住むインパというものがお主の行くべき道を示してくれるだろう。そこに住むインパというものがお主の行くべき道を示してくれるだろう。So,そこに over there, sumu here is the verb to live. Uh, very, very common. Wherever you live right now, that is where you are sundeiru. That's where you're living. そこに住むインパというもの。so impa is the name of the mono of the person, and we can see that because of the toyu. Impa toyu mono, the person that's called impa, ga onushi no ikubeki michi o. So the path that you should take. Onushi you iku go beki should michi path the path that you should take o shimeshite kureru daro. And shimesu just means to show, right? To, to, here you are, just like a map. Shimesu, I'm showing you. So I am going to show you the way that you should go. So the person called Impa who lives there is going to show you the path that you should take. シーカーストーンの the village of Kakariko no basho wa the place of that village wa as for it shikaston no mapu ni on the map of the seeker stone remember that kind of nintendo switch looking thing ni shiru sarete oru so shirusu here is to mark down, right? It's it's written down on where? On the map. Here we can see with the knee particle showing where it's written. So the village, Kakariko Mura no Basho wa, is written down, shirusareteiru, on the map. Mapu ni. Kakariko Mura no Basho wa, Shika Stone no Mapu ni shirusareteiru. まず、あの双子山を越え、道沿いに北へ進むのだ。And And the final sentence of this episode, we have six new words, so we're finishing off with a bang. <laughs> we have まず, あの双子山を越え、道沿いに北へ進むのだ So, まず, first things first, あの, that, 双子 so this is twins, um, and we have Ftago Yama. Yama is the mountain, so the twin mountains. So we're looking for a place that's kind of like an M shape, uh, <laughs> where you have you know a mountain that looks like that. Twin mountains, Ftago Yama o Koe. Now this is very similar to the other Koeru that we saw previously. This is actually the same word, but it's just used as a different kanji. So this is to cross over. Rather than go beyond, it's similar, but it's more crossing over, right? Go over the mountains, cross beyond the mountains, right? So go up and go down, go through, right? So cross over the mountains, Futago yama o koe. And then we have Michi Zoi. So Michi is the path, and then Zo or So is alongside. 
kind of like a parallel line, if you think about it like that. So alongside the road, michi zoi ni kita e. So alongside the road, kita is north. So we've learnt higashi for east and kita for north. Kita e, so to the north, susumu no da. Susumu is the final word for this video, and that is to proceed, to continue, to go on. And then finishing with noda, saying what you should do. So if we put the final sentence all together, firstly, you should go over the twin mountains and then proceed north alongside the path. And that is it. Congratulations, everyone. You have now learnt 8% of the entire JLPT if you've watched every episode up until now. So how was that episode? I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, it was really, really fun for me to make. Um, I know it's been a little while since my last uh, vocabulary episode, just because I've got so much that I'm working on, like a crazy amount of things that I'm working on right now. Um, I am very close to getting four game examples per grammar point for the whole N3, 185 grammar points. <laughs> That's almost 600 grammar points from every game is like almost different. Just an insane amount of examples. I'm, I'm so close to finish that. So um, when we finish that, we're going to see a very, very large influx of grammar videos coming out. Um, and I've also changed some ways that I can look up language. Um, before, I've actually been needing to manually play through the entire game, <laughs> searching desperately <laughs> for, 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 for examples. And, uh, and that's been really tough. It's been really, really tough, guys. Um, but actually, I've just discovered a new method that is helping me with my productivity quite a lot. Um, so I'm giving that a shot and it's, it's skyrocketed my ability, um, not just for grammar. And um, this is actually pretty significant because um, this new method that I have, um, very soon um, I'm, I'm, I'm compiling a rough transcription like an auto transcription of a bunch of games and eventually i'm going to be able to very quickly search through almost any game as long as i have the voice acting for that game so i can auto transcribe uh, it's not perfect but it's good enough to find kanji and examples so that's going to be ramping up my speed for a lot of things soon as well uh, it's going to be ramping up uh, my ability to find grammar and it's also going to ramp up a lot my ability to find kanji for the kanji series as well so only good things are coming in store for the future so that's it for the sixth episode of the vocabulary series. So what video game would you like to see next covered in the series? So I'm going to leave you with three suggestions that I would like to see uh, come next. You can pick any video game you're interested in. Seriously, any video game. Just leave it in the comments section below. Thumbs up uh, whatever game you're interested in seeing and whatever gets voted the most. That's what I'll cover next. But my recommendations uh, for uh, the next videos, uh, not trying to influence anything, but just, just giving my um, suggestions. Three games that I would like to see covered. Number one, Dragon Quest VIII. I just realized that Dragon Quest VIII got re-released in Japan and the only way they were able to resell the game that wasn't that old, they dubbed the whole thing. Even NPCs. Like that game has crazy dubbing and I actually have the game sitting on my shelf right there and I've never played it, but I just found out, I was looking at footage and I was like, oh my God, it has voice acting for everything. So Dragon Quest VIII is my first example and it'd be nice to get some Dragon Quest on the channel, you know, some more uplifting and um, fun kind of stuff. The second game that I would like to see if you guys are interested is Final Fantasy VIII. 
Uh, I know it's been a long time, but I would really like to see some more Final Fantasy VIII. I've really been feeling like playing it lately. I just keep on wanting to play it and I'm like, ah, but, ah, ugh, I really want to. So Final Fantasy VIII would be an amazing game. And I saw a quite surprising amount of interest uh, in the last time that we had Final Fantasy VIII. Uh, quite a lot of people were voting that up. So I'd like to put that back out there in the universe. Uh, if you guys are interested in Final Fantasy VIII, well, hey, that's my second recommendation. Now, my final recommendation is going to be something completely new. Suikoden 2. I would really like to cover some Suikoden 2, you know, get a little bit more classic retro games in. Uh, for me, it was one of my favorite RPGs of all time growing up. Um, honestly, like when I was younger, it was on par with Final Fantasy 7. Uh, and it might have been the same for you if you experienced it um, back in the day. It was it was really impactful and it had some unique storytelling elements that I'd never seen before. And it also really has nice kind of, you know, pixel art that still stands up even to today. So it's a really, really cool game, lovely world, lovely story, great music, and something that I would love to see covered. However, they're just my thoughts. You don't have to vote for that. Please vote for whatever game you want to see covered. They're just my suggestions. As always, whatever game gets voted up the most will be the next game that we cover in the vocabulary series. So thank you very much, guys, for watching. I hope you enjoyed this vocabulary episode. Uh, we are getting really, really close to 10% of the JLPT. I think probably after the next video, we'll probably be at 10% um, of the JLPT. So that's not too bad, right? That's, you know, six, ep seven episodes maybe for 10%. So maybe, maybe, maybe 100 episodes looking at 100%. Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> but, you know, that's what we're looking at right now with the pace. So things are going really, really well. I hope you guys are enjoying the show. As always, thank you so much, guys, for all of your comments and support. It really does mean the world to me. I'm serious. Thank you so much. Um, it's just crazy. Uh, just, just this is just crazy. So thank you so much, guys. I am so, so happy to be making content for you guys. So thank you so much. And as always, thank you so much to all of the supporters on Patreon who are keeping the show going. If you would like to support the channel, keep it alive, please consider joining us on Patreon. Um, you can support the channel, you can join us on uh, Discord and kind of hang out with us and chat, uh, whatever you would like. So thank you very much everyone, have a wonderful time, please stay safe and I'll see you all again in the next video. See ya. それはシーカーストーン。長き眠りから覚めたあなたを導くでしょう。
なたはこのハイラルを再び照らす光今こそ旅立つ時です。100年の間眠っていたのですこの怪物が本当の力を取り戻した時世界は終わりを迎えてしまう。前に早く早く。メガミの祝福を受け。一段と頼もしくなったな<笑>わしはここじゃ早う上がってこいさすがさすが。ではわしの本当の姿を見せるとするかの我が名はロームボス・フォレームス・ハイラルかつてこの地にあった国ハイラルその最後の王だ国は100年前大厄災によって滅んだと言うたなわしはその時に命を失い今や魂だけの存在となってしまった記憶の確かでないお主に全てを語れば混乱するそう考えわしは仮の姿をとっていたのだ許せよ今こそ話そう百年前何があったのか厄災ガノンの正体それは太古の昔この国に生まれた魔王が怨念と化して復活した姿なのだ
ガノンは伝説や研ぎ話に現れるものとして語り継がれてきただがある時王国の占い師が一つの予言を告げたのだ大地に厄災ガノン復活の兆しありだがガノンにこうする力もまた大地に眠る我らは予言に従って発掘を行ったその結果陶器祖先の手により作られた遺物がいくつも発見された人が操る獣をかたどった四体の巨大遺物神獣自らの意志で敵と戦うカラクリの兵士ガーディアンそれらは我が国で長きにわたり語られてきた伝説と見事に符合していた封印の力を持つ王家の姫と大麻の剣に選ばれし騎士彼らははるかな太鼓異物たちと共にまことガノンを封印していたのだ100年前の王国には力の継承者である姫と才能ある騎士がいたそこで我らも祖先に習った陣を張ることにしたのだハイラル中から特に優れた能力を持つ4人を選び出し神獣を操る任につけそして姫を長さとし彼らを英傑と名付けて結束を固めた姫と五人の英傑が揃うことで厄災は封印できるはずだっただが狡猾なガノンは我らの想像を超える策を持って復活したのだ。城の地下深くから現れたそしてガーディアンと四神獣を乗っ取り襲いかかってきたんだ城の民や神獣の英傑たちは命を落とし選ばれし騎士も姫を守るために傷つき倒れてしまうこうしてハイラル王国は厄災ガノンに壊滅させられたのだしかし生き残った姫はなおも一人でガノンに立ち向かったリンク後を託しますあなただけが最後の希望どうか姫の名はゼルダわしの娘だそして最後までゼルダを守ってくれた騎士それがお主だリンクあの日お主の命運は一度尽きただがこの大地の祠に運ばれ百年をかけてようやく蘇生を果たしたのだお主が目覚めてより幾度か耳にした導きの言葉あれは今もハイラル城でガノンを抑え続けているゼルダの声だだがゼルダの力はじきに尽きるその時ヤツは完全に復活しこの国は今度こそ滅んでしまうだろうリンクよ国を守れなかったわしに言えたことではないがそれでも頼みたいガノンを倒し民をそして娘を救ってやってくれだが今なお四神獣はガノンに奪われたままハイラル城でも多くのガーディアンが動き続けておる今のお主がすぐにあの城へ行くのは厳しかろうまずはここより東の地にある村を訪ねるのだ
村の名はかかりこというそこに住むインパという者がお主の行くべき道を示してくれるだろうかかりこ村の場所はシーカーストーンのマップに記されておるまずあの双子山を越え道沿いに北へ進むのだ